death, paying taxes, and falling behind on lectures are the three inevitable realities of this world. And the more you run from them, the more they will come after you and haunt you. What's cooking sapiens? Welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Arham and I'm a fifth year medical student at the University of Oslo here in Norway. Firstly, let's go back to when I started medical school because for the first two years, I did not fall behind on any lectures, like not a single week of lectures did I fall behind. So luckily I did not have to catch up on anything before the exams. And how exactly was I able to do this? I would attend the lectures, from, let's say, 9 in the morning till 12 in the afternoon and once the lectures were done I would have lunch and then I would go sit at the library read the book like the exact same topic that we had in the lectures that same day take notes after this was done at like around 5 p.m. I would go and hit the gym and once I got done with training around 6 30 I would head back home and get home at around 7 30 and then call it a day. Now this routine made sure that I did not fall behind on any lectures at all and even on certain days when there was too much work to do I would still sit at school till like 7 or even 8 p.m. on certain days before hitting the gym and going back home. I would get done with the work that I assigned to myself before I was allowed to go back home and relax and actually this worked like a charm for me I had no exceptions I was doing this Monday to Friday and I was taking weekends completely off and recharging my batteries for the next week now this made me feel like a king like a perfectionist like somebody who was winning at life and winning against the odds you know winning against medical school which is considered as this hugely insanely competitive and hard thing, I felt like the king, you know, that I had everything in my control. Now before you come up to me and say, well Arham, wow man, that is so insane, tell us how you did this because we want to be like you, I'm gonna stop you there, I'm gonna say no, 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 because life is not supposed to be like that. I literally felt like a robot for two years, I was basically following the exact same routine every single day like from monday to friday and then taking the weekends off to recharge his batteries i felt like a machine you know not a human being because this routine sucked the entire unpredictability the fun out of my life and even though i did not get burnt out because i was taking weekends completely off and recharging myself i still felt like a machine who was simply executing the algorithm provided to it without even thinking you know so life did not seem like life life just felt like a software or a program and i was the one who was simply just you know executing the algorithm and that's not how life is supposed to be and then came the third year of medical school, which was literally the most revolutionary thing I have ever done because I firstly stopped taking notes in medical school. And here's the way you can watch that if you want to. Second of all, I started making content for YouTube and on social media. And thirdly, I just simply stopped following this robotic routine, this robotic life that I had, that I had had for the past two years and now I started feeling more like a human being and life started feeling more like fun. I was less mechanical. However, there was one major drawback and that drawback was that I started falling behind on lectures. I had to catch up on tons of things because just lectures and topics and study material just started to pile up and that got me stressed out because I was like, man, how am I supposed to manage this now? Because I had never been, you know, in that situation where I had to catch up on so many things. And I, and I was like, oh my God, this is not good. It starts to hurt your ego and you start feeling stressed out and you just feel like, you know, you're losing control. And this feeling is quite unusual and unusual and strange. So that was the case with me. And that, my friends, is when I came up with the missions timetable or the missions planner and the entire principle or ideology behind this missions planner is the is an idea from David Allen's book called getting things done which is like a bible of productivity so the entire idea is that our brains are meant to have ideas and not store them so whenever you get a certain idea you just should just capture that idea because your brain will probably forget it so Whenever we like start falling behind in lectures, if we let our brain or if we let that thing continuously stay in our brain, then that will keep bugging us and start destroying the rest of our day. So for example, if I let's say miss a lecture on uh, on DNA, and uh, if, if I let that sit in my head for too long, then that will start messing with my brain and it will start to you know make me stressed out because I have this thing in the back of my mind all the time. So the best 
thing is to externalize and deload your brain from all these unnecessary worries and that's when you have to make a plan or a, a system where you can you know simply externalize every single thing that is bugging you so that's the entire ideology behind this mission's timetable. And now let me show you how this exactly works and looks like. So the very first thing that you need for this system to work is the app Notion, which is basically a free app for students and like entrepreneurs, an amazing, amazing app. Um, the basic version is absolutely free, of course. And here you need to create a page and then create a table. And you name the table or like the page missions. And you can add some fancy emojis if you want to as well. So the next thing that you need to do is create five columns. So the first column is going to be the name of the lecture, the topic. The second column is going to be the date of that lecture that you have missed out on. So for example, I missed out on a certain topic called, you know, um, uh, introduction to pathology, and then I would write down the date for this topic. And then we have the next important, important column, which is called the status. And here you can choose between three options. You can create an option, create an option called in progress, completed, or not started. So if there's a lecture which I have completely missed out on and not started working on at, in, like, at all, then I would call it not started. If I've if I'm like uh, if I'm st if I have started a lecture and I'm you know still doing it, then I would call it in progress. And then once it is completely done, and then I can label it as completed and I completely forget about that. So the next column is going to be the priority, and this is extremely important because when you have fallen behind on so many different lectures and the exams are like three uh, are just around the corner, you know, two three weeks. Uh, so then you have to really prioritize which lectures you need to catch up on at first in order to secure the maximum number of, you know, um, safety uh, when it comes to passing your exam. So you can have a high, medium and low priority uh, uh, in this column. So if you know that a, this, a certain lecture is extremely important, then you mark it as high priority and vice versa. And then comes the last column, which is the recording. So is the lecture recording available? For some lectures, at least in Oslo, some professors do not like to take recordings or record the lectures, and hence they, they don't you know, really upload the recordings. Um, so here you just you know choose between yes or no. And this is important because if I know that, okay, this lecture does not have a recording, then firstly, I save myself a lot of time by not, you know, searching for the recording. That's very important. And second of all, I mentally prepare myself that, okay, for this lecture, I will just have to look at the lecture PDF and then also um, collect some information from, you know, diverse sources like Google, Internet, Wikipedia, etc. So this is like the base of this entire missions um, planner. So this missions table that I'm showing you right now is basically from the fourth year of medical school where I had fallen behind of tons of lectures because I was not really motivated for medical school or I was focusing too much on other stuff. Uh, but anyway, this table literally saved my bum because you can see all these lectures which I had fallen behind on, but you know, making this list, making this system, uh, externalizing everything that I had to catch up on really, really, really reduced the burden when it came like when exams came closer because then I knew that okay this is the table I need to catch up on these and these things and once this is done I am okay because normally if you do not if you do not make this list then things seem much worse than they actually are you might be thinking that okay oh man I have lectures from that week from the second week from the tenth week so much stuff to do but once you put that on paper or like in front of you when you see that visually and it does not look that much, that bad, that's when you start thinking, that, okay, you know what? This is doable, I could do this. I only need to do like one or two lectures every single day and then some revision and I will be good for my exams. So this revision timetable is literally going to save you a lot of time and then also a lot of stress, man. That's a wrap for today, Sapiens. Now for some very odd reason, people think that medical school is like the hardest thing in the world. And I debunk that in this video right here. So yeah, I'll see you guys on the other side, subscribe, take care.